Hey guys, welcome back to more competitive EDH. I know it's been a while. Um, during that hiatus, um, I've come up with a new format of recording, so you will hear the other players um, talking. That doesn't mean that I'll only use this. Uh, I do want to have some um, games where you hear more of my thought process, but it is good to know that we're humans and enjoy playing this game while we play it. Um, and I've also been working on some new decks. So this is my four-color Paradox Engine Storm deck uh, with Thrasios and Vile Smasher at the helm. So I hope you in this, uh, enjoy this video. So you have two mono green decks at this table? Green's good to collect. We have Jace, so this hand is fine. Monocolor decks are the Oh, I got grab some all. Don't say monocolor decks are the best. There's no way that you can argue that uh you know, Sidisi Ant is the best storm deck at this moment. Okay, maybe it's not the storm deck, but it's, <laughs> it is conceptually the best. As in level of goodness. <laughs> you are good at I do enjoy a monocolor deck, though. Yeah, I wish there was, like, an actually good mono-white and mono-red one. I mean... SRAM! I play SRAM sometimes, but it, it means... I mean, the deck is so mean. <laughs> it works. I mean... I think I went on turn two the other day with SRAM. It's not the best deck, but people don't give enough credit. Yeah. Uh, it's... I've had one turn three with SRAM, but it was kind of, like... Lucky. When, just because everybody else got stopped and it's like, okay, well, I'll just start doing this thing. Yeah. When uh, That's what I take, that's what I pull out when people are like, oh, let's play a fun game. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's certainly not the best thing around, but people just give it a lot more <laughs> trouble than it deserves. I should play more CDC, Jason, uh, uh, SRAM. Yeah, I like playing monocolor decks a lot. I think Yisin is one of my favorites to play, to be honest. But uh... I'll just be the monocolor storm player. Exploration. That is a card. There we go. Dude, he's so good. He's a sixteen cost nine nine. Why not? I'm sure there's going to be eventually some journal where it's like CMC matters in your hand. You can just be like, you know, reveal dual axe damage. Oh yeah, and that'd be kind of fun. There, I think there are cards that do that, like reveal card at random, deal that much damage. I think that exists in red. I'll Google it. Well, I'm recording, so I, I won't Google it. No, 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 it's fine. You, you're, you're good to go. Play on birds. Go ahead. No worries. Even still, though, if you had something that revealed at random, like, you have to have Draco as your only card, and it's only 16 damage. Yeah, there's nothing that can really, like, kill somebody off with just your... You don't have a version of, like, um, Blazing Shoal in effect or something. Yeah. I mean, you could do something where... Um, there's a card that's similar to Perforos style things, where when something enters, it deals its, I think, equal to its mana cost, or it might be power. If it's power, it's not the best one, but if it's mana cost, it'd be kind of cool. If you could flicker it forever or something, but... You copy us, Paul? That's fine. Yep, you're good. Carpet is good by me. Yep. I assume that's fine from play. Yeah. Sorry, this is a bit uh, tricky just because of uh, the. I I feel like Imperial Seal and like early game tutors are really weird if you don't have like an immediate win. Well, they can be, but sometimes uh, I've been Imperial Seal for, like, just mana crypt a lot. Yeah, exactly. And that was one of the options I'm considering. And if I do that, I have probably two, three, four, five, six mana next turn.
see what this card can do. Your turn. Green Ranger. It's good. Cool. Play your two lands. Perhaps he doesn't have two lands. Uh, cast a key sound. It's good. Cool. Oh, there's something happening. What one mana counter spell counters Yissin? Uh, yeah. Also, it doesn't hit Yissin. It's only hit instants and sorceries. Yeah, although he has okay. he has played two, like, that would have been the third spell this turn, so he wouldn't have been able to pay for it. So, like, um... It was Kyrian Ranger, then Yesen, and then your spell would have counted as the third one. So X would have been three. I love that card. Yeah, it's fun in this deck. There's a, there's a video, and I don't remember if it was one where I played against, I made a competitive room, and then people joined with like 75% decks, and I posted it just to demonstrate the difference between 75% and 100% for you know viewers who are not like 100% competitive all the time. Um, I can't remember if it was that one or a different one, but Sakura Tribes got just carried because it's so good with Kyrian Ranger. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I was like, am I going to have less islands for my Carpet of Flowers next turn? No. Did all my calculations based on islands existing. I mean, he could fail to find if he wants. True. Uh, it'd be so often. There's no other islands in this deck. I had a guy play against me yesterday, and he sacrificed his land to search for something, and was like, your goblin sharpshooter doesn't untap, but I had living plane in play. I was like, no, your thing died, so it does untap. Uh, people really don't understand static effects very well sometimes. I mean, that's a weird interaction. It is weird, and people couldn't get over the, like, your lands don't have haste sort of thing, too. Living Plane is a very weird card. What deck were you playing it in? <laughs> My awesome Add-on Oaken Shield deck. That's its other win con, is Sharpshooter and uh, Living Plane. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. I remember seeing that somewhere on the somewhere on Discord. Here. Like, it was either that or what was what was your alternate win condition? Uh, the other win con is you just have Paradox Engine and you keep casting. You need four mana, uh -huh. basically. And you keep casting Death Cultist or if you don't have Death Cultist, do what? Wait, I respond? No, that's fine. Uh, and then you can insulate in, uh, Neonate to draw your deck, too, if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, I'm about to get smacked on by some elves, I feel. Could be. Could be. I mean, I'm the only black player at the table, so. Yeah, there's a lot of racism at this table. Um. Yissin's the most consistent deck at this table, though. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the best deck at this table, but, like... <laughs> don't want to say that, of course. Well, but, um... thanks, man. No, it's it's definitely good in this table because it's harder to interact with uh, because you don't actually cast yeah, a lot of things. Yeah. Sure, I'll pack with, I'll pack with Query in, because why not? Sure. But yeah, I like um, I like Yisin more than Silvala just because it's the most consistent deck in competitive EDH. 
I mean, Sissé is more consistent. Yeah, Sissé is even more consistent than Nissan, but it's like kind of... I don't know why, I never enjoyed piloting that thing. Isn't it the same thing? You just have to actually cast your spells? Yeah, Sissé used to be my deck before I switched to solo. Uh, Nissan, for one? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Cool. If only there were a creature in green that gave all your creatures haste. I guess you could use, uh, what's the four mana guy? Sorak? But he's kind of garbage. I think there's really only concordant cross cards that gives, like, mass haste in green. Right, but because it's not a creature, it kind of blows. Yeah. Because then Yisin could basically just go off in, like, a turn. Yeah, that's fine. What's this? Sorry about that. That's his tap. I use. I mean, you could untap Kyrian Ranger if you wanted to. Yeah, you untap. Tin Horn Elves. You use Scourge Hype Scout's ability. And then. Yeah. Play more islands for me. Yep. Yep, not doing anything else. Carpet Flowers is one of my favorite cards uh, to play. It just feels so good. That and Mr. Cremora, like, they're just some of the best enchantments ever. Uh, are you going to yeah, pay? Only, Carpet is the only, like, sort of green card I really miss in, like, so Storm Strategies. It's unfortunate that you didn't play another island. Could have used that. That's okay. okay. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can we just go back to um, playing yeah. with instead? Yeah, sure. Sorry, it just happened quite all of a sudden. Oh, because it was kind of silent, but yeah. So yeah, on playing with instead. Two. Yep. The obvious thing is coming out. How do you feel about um, Elvish Archdruid in that deck? Oh man, that is a card I've gone back and forth on like so many times. Right? Like, it, it's nowhere near Priest, but it, it's something at three that you can get that can tap for a lot of mana. Yeah. And otherwise you just don't have much there. Although I do like... Okay, cool. That's what I was doing. Okay, I'm trying to keep... Let's see. I do like um, Jim's tech of having a uh, Ramanap uh, Excavator in there. It's kind of Interesting. Yeah. Like, Endless Strip Mines is still pretty decent. Not amazing, but it works. Well, I noticed there's some like, really land-heavy lists that go up quite high on lands. Like, I've seen, like, 36 lands. I, I think that's... Like, Oracle. Like, Oracle, Zusa, the rest of it. Like, I think those could probably use it best. Yeah, but it's also, like, I feel like 30 to 32 is kind of the prime spot for Yisin. Uh, yeah. Just because, I like... I haven't gone up to the high land version yet, but I've seen a few people on it. I mean, I could be wrong, but I just feel like you have so much utility that you can offer with your slots because Yisin exists. So uh, you fill those with not lands, from my opinion. Three, that's why it's Dorn. Also, uh, I like writing Root Maze. Three. Yeah, Root Maze is very good. You gonna kill that Phyrexian Revoker? Is that what you're trying to figure out? Nature's yeah, planet? Yeah, I try to. Yeah, no, I can't do anything after. Draw. Man. Oh. Rip me. 
I didn't get to, I didn't get to draw anything. The reason I went for a study is because I wanted to draw stuff. Yeah, you got two off of playing birds. So True. That's, that's something. It was a divination. It's not bad. I'll take divination. Uh, all right. So we're gonna add, I guess, double red. Um, play watery grave, I guess. <clears throat> One, two, four talisman. And then we'll go one, two, three, four. Casting rolling earthquake where X is three. Oh, I feel sad right now. I'm trying to think of anything I can do particularly this turn. Relevant. Nope, nothing particularly. Alright, so we're going to each take three damage and everything dies. You can put yeah, Yisin in the graveyard. Primer. Primer update oh, yeah, for Yisin. Yeah, I going with the Silvala Primer. I know you're sort of... Uh, yeah, two gave me some, and Maynard gave me some changes to make, but I haven't had a chance to make them yet. All right, uh, did you have any suggestions? Did you see, like, the, the draft I posted? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. A bit ago, like, just for... Uh, I haven't started working on updating the Primer yet, but I did start making the... um the update message for like we're gonna make the two swaps just for the list and you know how like there's always a thing explaining why the swaps are made. Once I finish the next draft I'll send it to you. Cool. Yeah I haven't I don't know if I've updated the uh draw new primer to talk about swapping packs for Thoughtseize and uh putting in Linval or um Lily of the Veil, but Yeah. I wanna get the I want to get the Solvala change, but the update message approved soonish. You can get it through. So many new players have been coming in recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, not many people. I don't think anyone really plays Drow New other than me. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, I see TKO. But... Sometimes I see new Solvala players come in and they're playing Crossroads and I cringe. I mean, it's not a horrible I mean, I've card. I've that card for a long time. Yeah. I spent six months convincing everyone to cut it. I mean, you convinced me. I just needed to... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, you only, like, started... You rejoined the Saval server recently. Oh, yeah. With well, everyone else, like, it took me quite a while. I was all together for, like, six months. Yeah, I was yeah, off for a while, I joined too. the server six months ago. Yeah, I was off for basically October, November, and... Most of December, I think. Probably all of December. Yeah, I think by the yeah, time I, mean, I joined the like, server, Sug was already on break. Yeah, it was like July to December. I missed it, though. Paying for their six study? Yeah, after like a month of playing Solvala, I was like, you know, Crossroads really is bad, because I was like on and off about it, and then like, yeah. Most yep. people were, it was just me against everyone else for a while, and then, like, a little bit before you joined Sug, Maynard joined the, yeah, I see what you're talking about with Crossroads, and eventually got ASM on board. Yeah, well, I've had some people get me on board with other things, like, um, that I now totally agree with, like, a Paradox in City. See, so yeah, I was running Clark on Ironworks, mm -hmm. and... and Paradox seemed to be very similar on the surface, because this was right when it was spoiled. And, like, I think, well, I can make about the same amount of mana anyway. Do I really need, to, uh, like, a 5-drop rock rather than a 4-drop rock? But, like, after actually playing it, and ASM got me to play it, it was like, oh, no, this is really dank and city <laughs> Paradox really Engine dank. is one of the coolest cards, like, that we've had recently. Like, it just enables so many different commanders to do a lot of different things. Um, and, I mean, it's one of my go-to lines for this deck, so... Yeah, like, I mean, with Sidisi, it actually even opened up the opportunity to storm off without Ad Nauseam. The lines are really complex, but you can do it with just Sidisi and Paradox and enough rocks. That's a lot of, like, late-game grind to solo, because when games go long and you drop Paradox, it's just very nice to drop and grind out. Do you, uh, in Sidisi, do you run uh, Isochron Scepter with Paradox Engine? 
you're paying no, for the man vault. It, but like you can't do the dramatic reversal. So like you need to run a black instant. I mean, it, it can work, but it's not that great. Because Ice Chrome is totally dead without um, Paradox I do. Yeah. Don't you normally True. Just use top or something? Oh yeah, you can use top. Uh, top and, yeah, top and T, and I also have the um, the base alt rings combo in there as well. Okay. See, uh, with. That's fine. Yep. Uh, are you sorry? Did you pay for a risk study? Nope. Um. So what I've with this deck, uh, it's really cool that you know with Thrasios and, and enough rocks, you don't actually have to have the key, so you can just loop forever with top. It's nice. Oh yeah, you can just start. I mean, you can really just if you have enough like mana rocks out there, you can really just win just with um, Paradox Engine and Thrasios. Exactly. Like you just start pulling cards off the top. It's like mana intensive, and you can with, but mostly you don't. Yeah, I mean, it's... Gracias had a way to put a card from your graveyard into your library as well. I mean, you could just run uh, Tassigur in the list if you wanted to. Tassigur in the 99. That, that's <laughs> meme territory. That's the place there. Uh, go for a uh, bad uh, We need a four-color control deck with Gracias to Mephahom. And then, in the 99, we have Grand Arbiter, Tassigur, Burrell, and Rashmi. That sounds good. I'm still kind of mystified by that He-Man deck I see around. It's like, Thrasios, Timna, and it's all about getting humility to land. And like, okay, so it's like, four color your commanders don't work, but sure. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh uh, yeah, Remora Slade. Card advantage. Let's go. Cool. All my deck does is draw cards, actually. It doesn't do anything else. Aww. Someone doesn't Nothing like for me. Amora, so you get that. Yay! Alright, that's fine. Cool. Stifle. What's the difference between Squelch and Stifle again? I forget. Hey, what's Squelch? It's very similar, but it draws you a card. Counter target activated. Oh, not triggered. That's the difference. Are you casting something this turn? Oh no, I needed it in my grave. Needed what in your grave? What? I'm confused. Play more islands. I don't have enough mana. Well, it's okay. Maybe Silvala will play more islands for me. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that would be pretty sweet. I love islands. Oh, are you going to pay for both Mr. Kimura and Ristic Study? We are going to spell pierce that. All right, Brawl's fine. Uh, are you paying for Ristic Study? Yeah, I think I stand by my decision that Ristic Study is pretty good in this deck. A worldly tutor paying Ristic. Paying for Ristic. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to draw for Remora first. Yep. And then I will think. Guess I'll Swan Song, that's fine. Alrighty. Yeah, you got this one. <laughs> Uh, this thing not paying either, and you can gain life. Okay, uh, response to target. I will Psychrift the Silvala. 
we'll play you game three life. It's a thing. No Playing for a Rustic? Nope. Okay. We're going to move to upkeep. I'm going to stack the Remora trigger first and the Confidant trigger second. So the Confidant trigger will go off first. Then I will choose to pay for the Remora. Okay. So we're going to go Bayou, going to cast Mana Crypt, ah shit, uh, then we're going to move my second main phase and I'm going to add double black because I should have done that in the first main phase before I played the Bayou, but I didn't, so, um, we'll go ahead and cast Baral. So they both die, right? That's how that works. Um, cast Dark Ritual. And then I will cast Cabal Ritual. Um... I think I'll go ahead and play my Sylvan Library. And then I will cast Wheel of Fortune. Okay. Cool. I'm actually going to Wheel of Fortune right now. I think I missed a storm count over there. Okay. Sure. Um, we'll go one, two, three, four, five to cast Paradox Engine. Okay, now we rip. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you should, in theory. So, yeah, he has one, two, three, four. Four mana per thing, so if you could generate if you can get another rock or two, you should be able to go off. Nah. Doesn't guarantee you go off yet. True. No, I'll watch it play out until she makes more definite. But yeah. Oh, uh, we gotta wait for a play to know. wheel. He might have something. Yeah. Play. Do you have a response to Paradox Engine? Okay. So Paradox Engine resolves. We're gonna go. Um. Okay, we'll go one, we'll cast Merchant Scroll. Let me know if you guys have a response. Um, I don't have six, so like, I'm going to just be But I, I just want to see what's happening, actually, to be honest. So there's usually a point at which, like, this is like more definite. Yeah, I mean it's off chance that you if I don't want to just concede. You know what I mean? I hear I don't you. Like you have any I definitely hear you. Um So it's gotta be an instant. I think I'll go with intuition. And I will cast uh tap this for a black. And we'll add a blue in there. I'll cast a Grim Tutor. Paradox tr uh, Engine Trigger yeah. on the stack. Oh, that card's so bad. It's bad, but it does the job. Oh no, I understand that. There's some decks that I run in Grim Tutor in as well. It's like, 
just every time I see it, it's like, oh, you're my least favorite card in the deck. Even in the decks that I do run it in. Yeah, it's it's brutal. Okay, so then we're going to go one, two, three, four to cast Adnaz. Paradox trigger on the stack. Yeah. I'm going to concede to this one. You're going to pack the Adnaz? Alright, that's fine. Are you paying for the uh, Rhystic and the Mystic Remora? The Rhystic Mystic. Alright, so he's going to untap. Uh, I'm going to cast Demir Signet. I'll float Colorless in a blue. Is that fine? We're going to cast the one, one, two, blue, and a colorless. We're going to cast that intuition that I had. So my line should be pretty obvious here. Regrowth and Noxious, wherever you are. Dead. Yeah, I mean, I also, so the tutor targets I got, I had Dramatic Reversal and I have Isochron in hand too, so like if you stop the Paradox somehow I have backup. Cool. Good game. Good game, guys. So this has been an odd game. Um, so to start, uh, I want to say that the, the tutor for the Rhystic study um, was a play by me that basically said, I think that the Thrasios card advantage plan is a little bit too slow. And so I'm going to use something else that is either a taxation effect that affects everyone, because Mr. Grimora uh, does not affect everyone at this table. We had two uh, mono green players who don't play a lot of non-creature spells, really. Um, so I wanted to play something that was going to basically provide card advantage. Um, mana wasn't that important to me at that point in the game, uh, but I just I needed to dig and try to find something. So that was the first important moment, uh, and it worked out really well. Um, in addition to that, the this isn't really a moment, but the setup, knowing that I had a mono blue player, allowed me to keep a hand with Carpet of Flowers that otherwise might have been just okay. Um, but the game was particularly weird because we had uh, three multi or um, three monocolored decks, um, and that kind of changes the way you approach the game. Especially since um, two of those decks were mono green, uh, that means that I don't have to play around interaction that much, um, just because they're not going to be doing all that much. But it does mean that I have to have answers, especially with Solvala to my right. Um, so the uh, the final important portion of this game was the combo turn um, in which I so I tutored for all my combo pieces instead of trying to tutor for interaction or whatever um, I decided to go for having top and having dramatic reversal and isochron scepter in hand so that I could go for either combo um, I didn't want to lean on one too hard kind of on the off chance that uh, you know, there was a force of will or something, but um, once the Paradox Engine resolved, I really had the game, um, but I just wanted to make sure I had every piece that was necessary in order to ensure a win. Um, and that's why my tutor lines were there. Now, I did get pacted. It was a suicide pact. He would have died to his own pact in his upkeep, um, but that pact would have taken away the, uh, the Adnaz, which was kind of an additional spell that I cast just to make sure that I had a critical mass of things so that I could go off with Paradox Engine if for some reason there were answers for Sensei's Divining Top and um, ISO Rev. So with that, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.